Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on A Brilliant Night of Stars and Ice by Rebecca Connolly. A Brilliant Night of Stars and Ice by Rebecca Connolly tells the remarkable story of the crew of the Carpathia that came to the aid of the Titanic. Whew, you guys, I loved this book. I can't wait to get into my thoughts and feelings about this. Uh, so yeah, where to begin with this review? Um, everybody, I think for the most part, uh, everybody knows the story of the Titanic. It hits an iceberg, it sinks. Um, and the thing is, a, a lot of historical fiction when it comes to the Titanic, a, a lot of the story usually ends because uh, either your your main characters, they all die, you know, they either freeze to death or drown or whatever, you know, your story either ends kind of there uh, at the sinking uh, or it ends and your characters, they survived and made it and they get rescued by the rescue ship uh, Carpathia and whatnot. Um, a lot of books kind of just end there at some point and uh, you don't really get too much of a narrative after the fact usually. Um, if you do, it's usually just maybe a concluding final chapter. That's it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you guys, I have read so much Titanic historical fiction over the years. It's not even funny. And it's kind of gotten to the point. It's uh, authors really need to kind of do something unique and refreshing to really grab my attention because the Titanic it's a story that has been told numerous times and it's kind of hard to really do anything new with it. So yeah, when an author does manage to do something new with it, it's like, oh yay, good. <laughs> and what I loved about this book is we get the perspective of the rescue ship Carpathia and its captain and its crew and what they're kind of going through when they get to that first distress signal um, and Titanic is saying, hey, guess what? We're sinking, you guys. The unsinkable, unsinkable ship, we're sinking. Uh-oh, someone come save us, help. <laughs> you know? So, when we have this captain and his crew that, for them, you know, they are in the moment. And we're seeing, the, the, this book is very much kind of in the moment, you know, almost kind of like a real time during what's going on with the sinking. And, and they have no idea what's going on. Now, we, the, the, the reader, obviously, we know exactly what's happening. We know exactly that the Carpathia is not going to make it on time, unfortunately. But, yeah, that's kind of part of this book, kind of that almost real-time aspect going on with this book, you know, because the captain and his crew, they kind of have this hope and motivation, like, oh, okay, we'll get there. Uh, they're not going to sink that fast, you know? Um, so you do have that point of view. I think the bulk of this book is definitely told through that point of view of what's going on on the Carapathia and how the captain is feeling, how his crew is feeling, and yeah, kind of the other passengers on there as well. So that is kind of the bulk of this story. But then you do have um, the, uh, the other point of view of a character who is actually on the Titanic. Uh, her name is Kate Connolly. Uh, no, re no relation to Rebecca Connolly here. <laughs> no relation. Uh, they just share the same last name. Um, you have the point of view of a young woman named Kate Connolly. She's a third class passenger. Um, so uh, I, I really liked what Rebecca Connolly was doing with this narrative because you, you have those great alternating chapters and the dual points of view because you had the perspective of Kate Connolly who is like I said in third class um, uh, how how she witnesses and views things going on in third class kind of before the sinking and then during the sinking how third class is being treated and the lack of the lifeboats and whatnot um, so you have that insider perspective someone who is actually there on the Titanic which then nicely goes with kind of the outsider perspective with the captain and his crew on the Carpathia, the fact that they have no idea what the hell is going on. So yeah, the alternating chapters absolutely worked for me. I loved both Kate's narrative and then yeah, the captain of the Carpathia, uh, his name was Captain Arthur Rostron. I loved his point of view as well um, because yeah, he's a historical figure it, it's like he's a big deal when it comes to the sinking of the Titanic, but a lot of times he's only ever just mentioned in name only, that he was the captain of the, sh the, of the rescue ship and whatnot. He's, that's all I've ever known is just his name. So I, I love seeing his point of view and perspective and how he f might have felt during the situation, you know, the intensity, the heat of the moment, you know, decisions that had to be made in those 
intense moments that were life and death, essentially. It was all his responsibility, him and his crew. So, obviously, it's not a spoiler to say, you know, that the, the ship sinks. <laughs> we all know that the ship sinks, the gang sinks. Um, so, what I also really liked about this book, the, the chapters that are actually on the Titanic are really only a small small portion of this book. The bulk of this book is more focused on after the sinking, like, because Kate, because um, this isn't really a spoiler, because like I said, this, the, the ship sinking itself is just a minimal part. Um, Kate does manage to get on a lifeboat at the very last minute. Um, so yeah, a lot of this book, there there's several there's many many chapters with Kate kind of just on a lifeboat and her kind of facing the reality of I managed to survive but there's thousands of other people who didn't and whatnot so um I, I really liked her unique points of view and uh, the emotional experience and turmoil she was going through because she definitely has this sense of survivor's guilt going on um and then yeah like I said, the bulk of this book is definitely what's going on with the, the Carapathia during this time period and what Captain Arthur Rostron and his crew are handling and dealing with. Um, and yeah, what they have to handle and deal with once they do rescue the, the lifeboats and the few passengers, really. Um, and I, I, I really liked Captain Arthur Rostron's character immensely. He, he's a man who's very honor bound, duty bound. He's willing to do the right thing uh, under terrible circumstances, you know. Um, he, like I said, he has to make decisions in the heat of a moment, in the heat of intensity, uh, life and death decisions. Um, and a fascinating thing about this book, um, it, it definitely tackles the whole thing, you know, kind of the positive and negative things that that the captain had to, to handle um and how like the media during that time period how a lot of the media you know the newspapers and whatnot how they kind of thought of the situation uh like they're trying to almost vilify the, the carpathia to some degree like why didn't you guys save more people you know why did you leave the bodies behind out at sea because uh if i'm remembering correctly there was like a whole nother ship that came and collected the bodies um you know the people who died but yeah, to, to the captain of the Carpathia, you know, he felt it was his obligation and duty to spare as much pain and turmoil for the people who were alive. And, you know, they needed to get to New York, <laughs> you know, that was their original destination. He needed to safely deliver them to their destination and try to avoid any possible pain and suffering that they were going through, you know. And yeah, stopping and picking up bodies in his mind felt like kind of a, a wrong decision but yeah to the newspapers it's like oh that was a no-no you should have picked up all the bodies you know but yeah th this whole book is definitely this exploration of the this whole idea of people who experience a shared trauma if that makes sense people who, who experience a shared trauma and these people understanding and knowing the gravity of a situation and what this group is facing but people from an outside perspective have no idea. They don't understand, you know. Uh, the families don't understand the situation. The, 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 the newspapers don't understand the situation. The, the, all the political stuff, you know, nobody understands what was really truly going on with the sinking of the Titanic and what was going on here with the Carpathia and why Captain Arthur uh, Rostrum made the decisions that he made, you know. It, it, it is. It's, all that, it's that whole thing of the shared group experience that these people were in that moment nobody else outside of that can understand or, or realize the weight and responsibility that was going on so i did i loved how this book was tackling that situation um because i mean it's like any sort of disaster you know just real just disasters um you know we can sit at home watching the news and be like, oh, I would have done something differently. You know, I would have said something differently. I would have done something differently. I wouldn't have stood there and done this or that, you know. But once again, we're watching it from an outside perspective. We're not part of that shared group experience that people had to go through, you know. So I liked how that was handled in this book. It was very wonderfully done. Um, and, and something else I just absolutely loved about this book, you guys, once again, we all know the sinking of the Titanic and whatnot, and it's going to sink. But Rebecca Connolly 
she manages to provide so much intensity. Um, and I think when an author does historical fiction well, you know, even though you know events, I think an author has done something really well when they kind of give you that feeling of, oh, oh, maybe, maybe something won't go according to plan, you know, like how you historically know it's going to be, you know, because there were, there were moments like, oh, maybe, maybe Cap Captain Arthur Rostron, he'll make it to the Titanic in time, he'll save everybody, you know, well, when I know from hindsight, you know, because I know the historical point of view, I know he's not going to make it all time. But yeah, Rebecca Connolly manages to give such wonderful intensity to all these given situations and whatnot, and makes you feel like hopeful for, for what the captain and his crew are going to achieve. And you guys, this book is definitely just general historical fiction, but I, I, I'm kind of almost surprised this book isn't in like the like the the Christian fiction section, if that makes sense. Um, I'm, I myself, I am not a religious person at all, um, but I, I I did I definitely found this book to be very highly religious and spiritual, um, um, because both Kate and Captain Rostron, they're both characters who are highly religious. They, they believe in a greater power. They're very spiritual. And yeah, there's many moments for both of these characters when you're within their perspectives and whatnot. There's many moments where they feel kind of these, these moments like, you know, we survived or we did these things because there was a greater, higher person or, or, or a purpose or something guiding us and helping us make these decisions, you know? Um, so, so... If you're someone, if you are like a, a Christian yourself or, or, or whatever, um, I, I think this is definitely an appropriate book. Um, seriously, I would almost classify this as something very close to Christian historical fiction. Um, it reads very much kind of like that. Um, um, like I said, it is. There's something very highly spiritual and religious about it and like I said I'm not someone who's religious at all but it, it's like I, I felt very moved this book definitely really moved me in that that way kind of the sense of hope and things that are uplifting you know despite this great tragic tragic tragedy and all the, the horror and all the death and whatnot um there there's still kind of that uplifting nature of it um that these characters you know Kate and Captain Rostrum you know who, who have religious backgrounds and religious beliefs, you know, uh, that is what kind of gives them f purpose and, and meaning and for them to keep living their lives and doing the things that they do. So yeah, I definitely recommend this book if you love all things historical fiction, especially when it comes to the Titanic, and especially if you're looking for just something different with the, with the Titanic. Um, once again, the Titanic itself is really just kind of a small minimal portion of this book because the majority of it it takes place with either like Kate on a lifeboat or then yeah once the lifeboats are rescued and then kind of the whole aftermath and yeah some of the decisions Captain Rostron and his crew have to, to make you know uh in the heat of some really dramatic moments um uh, I, I really rec highly recommend this it was just thoroughly enjoyable and engaging uh, an emotional e experience in just so many different ways I just greatly appreciated the, the narrative and story that uh, Rebecca Connolly was trying to tell and kind of the themes and messages of it. Once again, there's something just highly very religious about this book, which is just so strange because I normally just do not gravitate towards books like that. Um, so, so yeah, just a re very refreshing book when it comes to Titanic historical fiction, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I, I think there's a good chance you'll really enjoy it. So you guys, well, that is it for my thoughts and feelings on A Brilliant Night of Stars and Ice. A lovely title, I think. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments below, have you guys read this book? Um, did you love it or hate it or do you plan on reading it sometime in the future? Uh, just let me know your thoughts down below. So that is it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.